Hey y'all, this is Kit from the Johnson City Public Library. I'm here today to present the Chalk Art Program that we are putting on for our Summer Reading Program 2020. We're looking for a program that would combine accessibility, affordability, and creativity, some form of entertainment um, that would span across all ages. And so we thought, what better way than with Chalk Art, right? So, this is something that you can do with your whole family. You can make it as easy or as difficult as you would like and you can be as creative as you want, which is absolutely what we're going for. We wanted to make sure that there was some kind of form to the art this time around. So, we're gonna be working with gridded art. And if you haven't heard of that, it's exactly what it sounds like. Basically, you're gonna take an image, place a grid over top, and then we're going to be able to make the image bigger by making a larger grid on the sidewalk, driveway, whatever you're going to be working on. It's very simple um, and it allows you a lot of creativity but also some sort of guidance, right? So, what you are going to need for your chalk art. Obviously, chalk, right? That makes sense. So you can use chalk from the dollar store or if you have like a big container like this, great. As many colors as you want. Um, if you're looking for something that's going to last a little bit longer and be a little bit more vibrant, because you know, we're getting lots of rain, um, oil pastels. Soft pastels are a great option for that. Um, so I just dug around and found some of our old pastels. So there are pros and cons to using chalk or pastels. So if you're using the chalk, Obviously, you've got a wide array of colors. It's very simple. Um, it's designed to be used on pavement, right? Um, the cons, however, even though they go further, the color is not as vibrant, and as soon as it rains, or someone walks on it, or your dog rolls in it, or whatever, it's gone, right? It just doesn't last that long. Now, if you're using oil pastels, you can already tell the colors are way more vibrant. Um, so, if you want your art to really pop, this is a great way to do that. However, it takes a lot of pastels to color in anything. They're not designed to be used on pavement, so you will go through a lot of pastels. So while it's very vibrant and, and luscious, the colors are great, you will go through a ton of pastels, so that's definitely a drawback. Um, I recommend using a little bit of both if you can, but again, chalk, definitely the easiest way to go. So now we need an image. What are we going to create? It can be anything your heart desires. It could be something for our summer reading theme, which is folk tales, fairy tales, and mythology. That leaves it open for a wide range of exciting things. You could do dragons, cryptids, you could do a castle in the sky. Uh, maybe you want to do a picture of your cat, or your favorite director, or that one weird uncle that you have that only shows up to your family picnics to eat the potato salad and then disappears? Strange. But whatever you want to do, that's the best part. Once you have your image, you can either print it out if you have access to a printer, and if you don't, you can use our curbside pickup to do a print job. Um, you're going to take your image and you're going to make grid lines on it. So I took mine on the computer, and I'm going to be using our logo, a version of our logo. And you can slap a table right on top of it. You can use Word, Publisher, Canva, whatever program you might have. You could even use Paint. Like, it's very simple. As long as your squares are evenly spaced and they're the same size. That's all that matters, okay? If you don't have access to a printer, you can totally do this on your phone, tablet. Um, take a picture out of a magazine. If you can't do the grids on your computers, use a ruler and a pencil. If you're looking for more images that are simple line drawings, you can search grid art online somewhere like Pinterest. So the size of your grid is going to be totally up to you. It's what you're comfortable with. So I took the logo and I did about two and a half inches for each box for the grid and I translated that to two feet per box on the ground. So I took this image and made it six feet by six feet, because there's one, two, three, right? So two feet, two feet, two feet by two feet, two feet, two feet. Very simple. It does not have to be an exact ratio. Like I said, if your grid is evenly spaced, that's all you need to know. If you want to get really scientific and mathematic with it, awesome. 
So obviously with mine, I did larger squares. So there's more in each square to draw, but there's fewer grid lines. You can also do more grid lines, smaller boxes, so that means there's less in each to do. Totally up to you. Again, I can't stress enough, it doesn't matter what size the image, what size the grids, as long as the boxes are even. That's going to make things way simpler for you. So, we're ready to go outside. We have our tools, we have our image, we're ready to go. Next, you're going to measure and mark the outside edge of your grid. For example, my boxes were two feet by two feet, and they were three wide. So, six feet by six feet. I marked each of the four corners and then connected them with the chalk line. You can do the same thing with a piece of chalk and your straight edge. From there, you're going to measure and mark each of the spots where your boxes will connect. So again, every two feet, I marked my boxes. Once you have all of your marks made, all you have to do is connect them using your straight edge or your chalk line. And you are ready to create. So there are a couple of different ways you can do this once you are ready to get started with your image. So the first way is the straight on approach. You go grid by grid. If you start in the left hand top corner of your image, you start in the same spot on your grid. You go all the way through and create your masterpiece from top to bottom, bottom to top, whatever, just straight on. The second way you can do this is by inverting your image. This is easier for some people because you're not focused on the whole image. It's a little easier to focus on each of the boxes, which promise it will be way easier if you focus on each of the grids instead of the entire piece of art. So if you start this way, it's the same approach. You just go box by box in the order. You're just drawing it upside down. It's the only difference. But then when you stand on the other side of it, you have the perfect image ready to go. The next way is to number your grid, each box gets its own number, and make sure your grid on the sidewalk gets the same correlated numbers. So again, top left corner is one, the top left corner is one on your sidewalk as well. And this is a really fun way because it kind of gamifies things and makes it a little bit more interesting to see where they're gonna go. So what you do is you cut up the grid that you have just numbered, and you randomly pull out one grid at a time. So I got lucky number three for the first one. So that's where I would start on my grid, is the spot where number three would go. And you proceed that way. So it'll look a little jumbled at first, but it's really cool to see how that turns out. Um, again, that's really helpful for some people because you're not focused on the whole image and making it perfect. You're just focused on one grid at a time. As far as the actual image is concerned, I like to start with the outside edge for each grid. So just draw the basic outline of the shape that you're doing and then color it in. It makes it a lot easier than just trying to color a shape that you're not sure where it's going. It'll also help the edges of your image line up inside of the grid to make a whole picture. So something that I found that really helps to make the image cohesive is once you're done and you're all colored in, you take your foot or it could be a rag, a paper towel, whatever, and drag it across the image. And that'll make the colors blend nicely so you're not seeing all the lines of where you've colored in. It just kind of helps to create a more cohesive image. So now you're done. You have a complete piece of art. It's beautiful, I'm sure, colorful, exciting. Now you can add text to it. You could add stars and hearts. You could add a rainbow. You could add whatever you want to it to make it yours. Sign it, put your autograph on it so your neighbors know who made it. Um, you can do whatever you want with it. Add something that makes it uniquely yours. Here's the most important part of the chalk art program, other than having fun and creating beautiful art. Tag us in what you're doing. We want to see everything that you've created. Take pictures, take videos, whatever you want to do and share it with us. Make sure you tag us on Instagram and Facebook, or you can email us through the summer reading program. Whatever is easiest for you. We would love to see what you're creating. It makes us very, very happy. Thank you so much for tuning into the Chalk Art Program. I'm not going to keep you inside any longer. It's time for you to go out and create something beautiful. If you haven't already done so, please sign up for our summer reading program. All you have to do is visit our website at www.jcpl.org, click on the little banner that says Summer Reading Program, and then follow the instructions to sign up. You can log your time, there are activities you can complete, there are prizes you can earn. It's a lot of fun, and it's a great way to keep reading during the summer. 
Thank you so much for participating in our summer reading program. We hope to see you continue that for the rest of the summer. And don't forget to stop by curbside service where you can pick up any holds, share your artwork, just say hey, we miss you guys. And again, I hope that you're enjoying your summer and keep reading. Bye.